नमस्कार लेट्स लर्न अबाउट दिस ब्यूटीफुल रेमेडी नक्स मॉस चाटा फ्रॉम डॉक्टर एन एम चौधरी मेट्री अमेरिका टुडे डॉक्टर एन एम चौधरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुली टॉक्स अबाउट दिस रेमेडी व्हिच बिलोंग्स टू माय एस्टी केसी फैमिली एंड इट इज एक्चुअली द ड्राइड रूट ऑफ नट मेग एंड दिस इट वॉज दिस दिस रेमेडी वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस इन टू अवर अमेरिका बाय हेल्बी and dr nm choudhury very beautifully writes about this remedy telling us its action its sphere of action and telling us about the leading key notes of this remedy its, its mental state and its general uh, you know general features general traits that this person has or especially you any person has when he is in a state of nakshmas chata those are beautifully explained by dr nm choudhury in his materia medica and let's understand the picture that he paints okay so first of all it talks about the particular action of nakshmas chata on the nervous system so this remedy has uh, an important important action on the nervous system where it causes various diseases which we can link to the nervous system which are due to the uh, in a disorder in the nervous system so it can be hysteria it can be locomotor locomotor ataxia it can be chorea epilepsy catalepsy fainting fits so any kind of disorder dysfunctioning of the nervous system is actually what you can find or find in nakshmas chata going ahead we see that there are various kinds of you know uh, situations that or various kind of you know symptoms that we find in this remedy so there can be trembling that we find so again it is all related to the nerves so there's trembling that we find so the patient while uh, you know uh, might stagger while walking he falls and this is all nervous disorder so this is obviously staggering is not related to trembling but that's also a state that you find in nakshmas chata fatigue lassitude so since nerves are involved if nerves get fatigued then also you have a weakness okay so that kind of nervous weakness is what we find in this remedy nakshmas chata <clears throat> and this patient will wish to lie down after any slightest exertion that he does so the fatigue is so much that they want to just lie down and even after you know short slightest exertion there's a lot of restlessness that we can find in this remedy and he feels that they, he must you know constantly move about so nakshmas must chata although he has fatigue as he might feel to that he must constantly move out now uh, listening to this uh, a remedy that comes to your mind must be a remedy which also another remedy which also has restlessness and weakness okay so the very common remedy we find is arsenicum as i think you would have guessed rightly so uh, arsenic is also a remedy in which we see that there is restlessness as well as there is weakness then how is it different from nakshmas chata so it is actually very different from nakshmas chata uh, because the weakness uh, is uh, you know very different because nakshmas chata it is generally nervous weakness means that it is more or less a nervous state brought about by abnormality in the economy of the nervous system okay so it's all related to the nervous system so the patient will complain of this fatigue and you know lassitude and etc but you know when we talk about arsenic it is it is and it is also weakness but it is because of a great loss of vitality so the kind of weakness you have after diarrhea or the kind of weakness you have after a lot of you no know, fluid loss or you know weakening situation vitality is low in that state arsenic is uh, you know indicated but here it is more of nervous weakness okay and it is uh, in nakshmas chata is it is a kind of weakness that can be you know conquered by the sheer force of will power okay it is it is only a nervous feeling which needs will power and then you can you know be better okay and uh, but sometimes what happens in nakshmas chata is that this weakness this nervous weakness you know it gets on and gets ahead into such proportions that we find that our patient is frequently fainting okay so since it is again related to nerves what happens is that they faint very uh, frequently commonly so that's what uh, is there in the introduction of nakshmas chata we see it as that it has uh, action on the nervous system creating all kinds of nervous disorders nervous dysfunctioning and then we also find you know a, a kind of weakness and restlessness which is also found in arsenic but it is different so arsenic's weakness is more of due to loss of vitality and uh, nakshmas chata's weakness is due to nervous state okay it is due to a dysfunction in the nervous state and this trembling this staggering is all kind of issues with nerve of in nakshmas chata moving ahead dr nm choudhury talks about the mental state of this remedy 
and here we find that these patients actually you know the kind of nervous weakness or the kind of physical state that they had the mental aspect of the patient also betrays the same tendency okay we find that these people have frequent vanishing of thoughts so they will just forget or you know what they were thinking about while talking while reading while writing and there's great weakness or loss of memory so they do not even have good memory uh, in addition to the frequent you know vanishing of thoughts like like we, the short term memory is also not good and there's loss of memory as well so this listlessness there is indifference okay there's indifference is listlessness they are very very you know kind of uh, a, bl a blank okay and there is as also this this is because actually the, there is a real depression of the nervous force okay he has no willpower of his own and therefore you know he is you know kind of uh, just you know, um, is a play or a thing of you know whims and fancy so whatever anybody says he, he will do it whatever happens around he will just follow that so he has no willpower of his own He's indifferent, he's listless, uh, you know, and he has weakness and loss of memory as we talked about. He stands in one place for hours together and does not know what to do and where to go. So he's, you know, he's this absent-mindedness is also there, forgetfulness is also there. He does not know where he is and he betrays great incoherence attempting to express his ideas. So even if he wants to express his ideas, he cannot, okay? And this is a, you know, total imbecile state that we see uh, in Naksmos Chata. Okay, but Naksmo Seta, when remedy is given to such kind of people with such kind of situations, then it actually really rectifies all the mental disorders that they have. It helps them a lot. And if we go, if, if the, these people do not get the remedy at the right time, they may go on ahead to uh, go into even more complicated states like stupor, unconsciousness and insensibility. Okay, so this was about the mental state of the remedy. Further, now we're going on to the leading keynotes of the remedy that Dr. N.M. Chaudhary talks about. So there are these keynotes of this remedy, uh, very, very important keynotes that, you know, if you remember these few keynotes of the remedy, you actually uh, are very well aware of the remedy then uh, and you you can obviously read the remedy in detail from other materia medicas but you know uh, to uh, nm Chaudhary has this beautiful uh, you know style of writing uh, materia medica in which he you know very briefly he will give the remedy uh, it is not very brief also it is not very quick and short also but it's enough uh, you know, uh, for a person to know the remedy as if it's uh, his friend and yet not have to spend a lot of time reading it, you know, it's like that. So he'll, he'll write the very important, you know, characteristics and very important keynotes of the remedy. He'll compare the remedy with other remedies and he'll, uh, you'll, you'll feel like you're just now acquainted with, acquainted with the remedy very well after reading his Materia Medica. So he, uh, in Naxmo Sata also, he gives us the leading keynotes of the remedy like in other remedies. So see, the first keynote that he gives us is drowsiness, which is very, very, very important in Naxmo Sata. No matter which Materia Medica you read, read, nobody, no author, no doctor is ever going to miss out this point. So there's a lot of drowsiness, there's constant and irresistible drowsiness. So no matter how much they try not to feel drowsy, not to sleep, it will be there. That state will be there. Okay, most of the time he will feel like he's sleepy, you know, he's muddled as if he's intoxicated. This kind of feeling is there in Anaxmos Chata. And uh, we see that their eyes are, you know, constantly kind of closed and he lies perfectly silent. Uh, uh, along with that, we see that uh, we have already talked about the nervous weakness of this remedy and that nervous weakness is obviously found with this kind of drowsy state also. Then we see that along with this, there are concomitants like chilliness and thirstlessness. So this is very, very important also. This is also kind of a keynote of this remedy that we find chilliness in this remedy and thirstlessness in this remedy. So any kind of situation that they are in, any kind of condition acute to their or, you know, chronic they are in and they're thirstless along with it, they're very chilly along with it is also an indication of this remedy. Again, there are some modalities uh, to prescribe, which is uh, that th there's this drowsiness that they have is more aggravated in damp and cold weather and it is better by warmth. So damp and cold will aggravate their issue and um, warmth will uh, make them feel better, make this drowsiness or feel better. 
now we'll again uh, compare the remedies as we've just uh, done with arsenic okay we, we talked about how the weakness of nux moschata is different from the weakness of arsenic while both of them have restlessness now over here dr nm choudhury very beautifully compares this remedy with opium because another very famous remedy for drowsiness and sleepiness is opium in our materia medica right so over here he says that nux moschata actually bears a great resemblance to opium right but in opium we find that the drowsiness is more akin to coma so it is you know more severe kind of drowsiness okay over here also it is irresistible but it is not so severe that you will feel like you're in coma or the person you know treating you or the or this or your relatives and whoever attends to you will find you you know so sleepy as if you're in coma so that kind of situation is there in opium Okay, there is suffused continence, there is stertorous breathing, and involuntary defecation and micturition may also happen. Along with it, we also find that there is thorough blunting of the senses, uh, and there, there might be also intense acuteness of the senses in opium. So all these things are there in opium. Like there's a, there's this there's this sleepiness which is very very you know severe. Like it might feel like a coma. Uh, there's this breathing, uh, stertorous breathing. There even you can uh, you know pass uh, stools and uh, you know urine involuntarily in that kind of a state. And the senses might act uh, uh, might be uh, them uh, blunt or they might be very acute. So these both states can be there. That these are all symptoms of opium. So you'll not have only you know weakness you might have all these things in opium and there are obviously many more symptoms that obviously we can compare but this is the kind of thing that we have in opium which we do not have in nux moschata at all so these uh, the senses acuteness sense of the senses breathing and all these things are not there in nux moschata nux Ma in nux moschata as we've already discussed the lassitude and the lethargy is purely purely nervous and it is nothing as like opium because in opium we see that there is intoxication of the whole state okay which is not found in nux moschata nux moschata is just a disorder in the nervous is not uh, up to the level of intoxication okay so this was about the first characteristic which is drowsiness which we have to remember and we'll be you know uh, com revising the keynotes uh, as we go ahead as well so you please remember these uh, whatever we are talking about these indications and as we go ahead we'll just question ourselves again to be able to remember them very well moving on to the next keynote which is dryness so in nux moschata we find that everything everything is dry so the skin is dry you can see the skin is dry the eyes are dry the nose is dry every everything you know lips are dry everything betrays dryness and there is mouth and throat which are dry particularly after sleeping and in mouth you find the tongue is especially very dry it is so so dry that it adheres to the roof of the mouth okay it adheres to the roof of the mouth and the saliva uh, is uh, you know decreased the amount of saliva that is secreted is decreased and it gets thick also and when we have this state even in spite of this state there is no thirst in the remedy so even if there is a lot of dryness and yet there is no thirst and because of this whole state obviously there is difficulty to swallow there is the food sticks in the throat due to a want of lubrication from proper saliva and the speech is indistinct and articulation is also difficult because of such situations okay and you know uh, it is also partly due to a uh, sort of paralysis but mostly due to uh, so this articulation is difficult also partly due to a uh, sort of paralysis because of the affection on the nerves but it is also majorly due to you know, the decrease in the salivation or lubrication okay uh, and you know this dryness of the mouth is so much it is so much and it is you know as we have talked about this particularly you know in sleep that they have a lot of after sleeping and they have a lot of problem in fact it wakes him up from sleep so if he's sleeping and this he'll just wake up because the mouth is too dry okay and nothing can be done to relieve this dryness nothing so whatever he tries to do nothing is going to help that much amount of dryness they're going to have and there's difficulty of deglutition due to the same cause as well so again because of that this uh, it is difficult to swallow right so this was the second keynote the first keynote that we discussed about was the drowsiness that these people have right the drowsiness so there's a lot of sleep kind of situation sleepy kind of situation which was aggravated by damp and amulated by warm and what were the concomitants of these this drowsiness that they had it was it was the chilliness that they had right 
was a chilliness that they had and the kind of damp weather aggravation was also there and they were thirstless okay thirstless so that was about uh, the dryness and the drowsiness uh, next moving on to the third important point keynote of this remedy which is tendency to fainting so this is also very very characteristic of this remedy okay so there's this tendency that they have to faint okay they're going to faint uh, so they faint on slightest provocation so any kind of slightest provocation like sight of blood if they see blood somewhere they they, they faint if they take odor of flower or for of scent or you know any kind of odor which is very strong okay that will also make them faint they, if, if there is any slight emotional disturbance that you know, uh, is there in their life that will make them faint. Standing for a long time will again lead to them fainting. So any kind of slightest provocation will lead to fainting. Now this is much marked after stool, which is a, a characteristic symptom. So uh, always remember, whenever you have any kind of you know um, modality, it's very very important, right? So if they have this fainting much marked after stool is again it's again a keynote for this remedy right and we see because of such a situation that in any slightest provocation is leading them to into fainting it is also a hysterical remedy uh, not only because of this but also because of uh, much many more symptoms like there is inordinate inclination to laugh and make a jest of everything so they're laughing no matter you know if the situation is like if there is any joke that has happened or if, any, if there's any situation that is actually laughable okay they're, ju they're just laughing no matter what so inordinate inclination to laugh and alternate changing of moods are there hallucinations are there you know so all these sim things are there and therefore it is you know a priceless remedy in hysteria is what dr nm Chaudhary says it is a priceless remedy in hysteria all right so that's uh, about the three very very important keynotes of this remedy the first one was drowsiness the second one is dryness and the third one is a tendency to faint that is what we have to uh, remember about this remedy and then dr nm Chaudhary further talks about the conditions in which this remedy is very very uh, you know important now let's uh, let us discuss about that so we find this remedy to be very very important in a situation that is dyspepsia okay so this this kind of no a dyspepsia of so they have this dyspepsia of a nervous origin and is generally found in any kind of nervous or hysterical subject so dyspepsia is there but more of nervous and hysterical kind of dyspepsia there is this tormentic flatulence that they have the stomach becomes bloated and the the, the stomach is becomes so bloated that they can feel the pressure on the heart and lungs and it brings on palpitation and dyspnea because of its pressure on the heart and the lungs and that is the whole situation when you feel that it, the patient is hysterical. Now, if you think, just imagine that a patient comes to you and tells you that I have, you know, something is happening. I can't breathe. And, I, you know, my, even my heart, you know, heart is, you know, beating a lot more faster and, you know, stronger. And I don't know why it is happening. And I'm very, very, you know, anxious because anybody will get anxious in such a situation. So they will get anxious. They'll tell you that, you know, they have this acidity also. And now you'll, you'll obviously anybody would label them as hysterical and in such a situation uh, other pathies do not have any kind of you know medicine for that state they will just you know tell them tell the you know tell their other medical colleagues that this patient is hysterical and they'll give them some anti antacids and that's done but in homeopathy we can give them such remedies like uh, now we're studying about this remedy Okay, Nux Moschata. There are even other remedies that are that have hysterical kind of dyspepsia. We find it also in asafetida, right? So this kind of these kind of remedies actually help them with the stain because the patient is really feeling uh, palpitation, really feeling the palpitations that he is having. He is really having dyspnea and he is also having acidity. But there is no uh, remedy or medicine in other pathies for this situation. But we have it, okay? And we should remember that. So there's traumatic flatulence, there's this bloating that happens and there's palpitation and dyspnea and there's tympanitis. But the very important thing, now uh, we know that there is uh, um, there are very beautiful remedies for dyspepsia, for bloating like ly lycopodium, Nux vomica, etc. But there is Nux moschata as well which is not inferior to Nux vomica or to uh, lycopodium. And this is what Dr. N.M. Chaudhary says. 
ओके बट समथिंग दैट इज वेरी डिफरेंट दैन नक्सवामिका एंड लाइकोपोडियम एज वेल इज दैट इन दीज पेशेंट दैट इज टिम्पनाइटिस ब्रॉट ऑन बाय अनप्लेजेंट मेंटल इमोशंस सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वेन अ मेंटल मेंटल सिम्टम मेंटल एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम एक्चुअली गिव्स राइज टू अ फिजिकल कंप्लेंट इज एंड इट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो टिम्पनाइट इज ब्रॉट ऑन बाय अनप्लेजेंट मेंटल इमोशंस इज वॉट वी सी वी सी इन नक्स मोस्टेटा दे ऑल्सो हैव डायरिया okay and the diarrhea is by cold drinks in hot summers after taking boiled milk and chronic diarrhea is there in pregnancy also in typhoid dr nm choudhary very beautifully actually gives a short totality of symptoms for patients of typhoid they have hemorrhage from bowels uh, they have put this the smell is very putrid or the stools smell very putrid this profound coma presses thirstlessness and bloody sweat and chilliness which is very characteristic of this family as well so all these things together and you can prescribe it for typhoid as well okay so any kind of no, symptoms of any remedy characteristic symptoms of any remedy if it is covered then we can give that remedy for any situation right so next we'll talk about the affections on females or affections of females that we find in nux moschata so dysmenorrhea of hysterical women okay that is a very important uh, you know situation in this remedy that we find dr nm choudhary talking about and then the menses of these people are also uh, you know have a lot of they these people have a lot of complaints during the menses so what are the complaints before menses what are the complaints during menses so before menses there is intense pain in the small of back which feels almost like breaking as from a weight of a hard board placed on the back so this is a very very characteristic sensation so if a person if a patient comes and gives you the sensation that is exactly written in your material medical you can be very very sure of the remedy along with obviously you have to see the totality of symptoms at the end the other symptoms should also match but if a sensation is as good as it is written in the book then it's already a, a peculiar symptom right and there is intense pain in the small of back which feels almost like breaking as from the weight of a hard board placed on the back what happens during menses they feel that there is a lot of back ache there is bearing down sensation there is headache there is lassitude and this is very important this remedy checks threatened abortion in hysterical females disposed to fainting so imagine a patient coming to you who is pregnant who is very who is kind of hysterical has those kind of hysterical dyspepsia situations and who has and is frequently fainting you know yeah so that kind of situation and in that that patient if she has threatened abortion uh, uh yeah you can think of nexmostata if all the symptoms agree Okay, so that was about Nux Moschata from Dr. N M Chaudhary's Materia Medica, right? So let's just very very quickly revise. What did we first talk about? We first talk about the nervous system of this family. Like its affection on the nervous system, isn't it? So we first talked about how it acts on the nervous system and it creates various kind of situations. It can be hysteria, at locomotor ataxia, chorea, epilepsy, etc., etc. This remedy has trembling. This remedy has a lot of weakness. It has restlessness. All of these situations are found in this remedy. That was what we talked about in the very start of the like uh, session. Then we talked about the mental state of this remedy, in which we find that this remedy is actually, you know, um, has you know total a kind of an imbecile state where there is no will power of his own. He is indifferent. He has loss of memory, and he just stands in one place without knowing what to do and where to go. Yeah, and 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 furthermore, if the state moves, you know, progresses ahead, the patient can go into a state of stupor, unconsciousness, and insensibility as well. Right. That was what we talked about in the start. Then we went on to talk about the leading keynotes of this remedy. And in the leading leading keynotes, we had three important important keynotes. So the first thing was that they are very very drowsy. Okay, this is a very important thing. Very very drowsy. Uh, a constant irresistible drowsiness, which is not like opium. In opium, it is more of a severe state, more of a state like an intoxication of the whole nervous system, like coma. but here it is more only due to nervous system only due to nerve nerves dysfunction okay nervous weakness this constant irresistible drowsiness that we find but there is concomitant also along with this which is chilliness and thirstlessness which is again also concomitant typhoid it is actually concomitant of this remedy only so in any situation if you find this to be concomitant chilliness and thirstlessness you can prescribe nux moschata if the other the main complaint also matches okay there is this damp cold aggravation of drowsiness or of his own state and there is warmth amelioration that we find and then when we talked about the second keynote 
what was the second keynote the second keynote was dryness so the eyes are dry the nose is dry right the eyes are dry the nose is dry everything uh, about this remedy is dry 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 and the mouth is especially very very dry right the tongue the tongue is so dry that it adheres to the mouth the roof of the mouth and along with that even if there is so much dryness there is no thirst in this remedy right uh, there is difficulty to swallow difficulty to talk because of that kind of dryness even the speech is indistinct and difficult right so that's what we talked about under the second keynote which was about dryness then we went on to talk about the third and the last keynote of this remedy that dr nm choudhary gives which was which was the tendency to faint so they are very very you know uh, easily they can faint any kind of provocation will lead them to faint like if they see blood they they can faint slightest emotional disturbance can make them faint even standing for a long time can make them faint so these are all situations in which they can faint and uh, this is especially after stool okay marked after stool we also find it indicated in hysteria uh, where they can they have this changeability in moods and laughing on uh, anything and you know not not on laughable things but anything inclination to laugh is there that was what we saw next we moved on to talk about the conditions in in which nux moschata is very well indicated very many times indicated so the first thing that we talked about it was that it is indicated in dyspepsia right it is indicated in dyspepsia so they have this bloating of the abdomen and this bloating is so much that actually it might also lead them uh, into lead, you know get, uh, put pressure on the lungs and the heart little dyspnea and palpitations we also saw that this remedy is very very important for diarrhea right for diarrhea which is brought on by cold drinks in hot summers after taking boiled milk right and we also saw that they have tympanitis which is brought on by unpleasant mental emotions so that is very important okay unpleasant mental emotions are leading to tympanitis typhoid also has these kind of symptoms okay any situation any condition it might be dyspepsia it might be female related complaint it might be male related complaint it might be an acute after fever or post fever weakness or whatever but nux moschata's characteristic symptoms if they are present you can give it so if there is drowsiness there if there is chilliness if there is thirstlessness if they have become indifferent if they have you know like a fainting tendency if the if their mouth has become dry you find their tongue to be very very dry if all these symptoms match in any kind of condition nux moschata might help okay next me moved on to talk about the female related complaints that these that this patient uh, okay that or nux moschata has so uh, dysmenorrhea of hysterical woman is what we first talked about then uh, menses in uh, before menses they have a uh, very very bad backache you know even during menses there is backache and bearing down sensation as well you can also use it in threatened abortion if the other symptoms are like nux moschata so this is all about the remedy nux moschata and from rm choudhury's materia medica and i hope you learned a lot from this and i hope that you go back and read it from even more number of materia medica from nash's materia medica from allen's keynotes from borick's materia medica from kent's materia medica okay so that was all for today thank you